Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is add relative rotation. Let's just quickly run through this example. It's pretty simple. We've got a couple items here. They're all one actor. They're just individual stack mesh components. I want that cube to rotate 45 degrees on the Y. So now it's rotating 45 degrees. And I can show you in 10 degree increments that you can see it's rotating. Now it may run into an issue depending on gimbal lock and things like that. And that's one of those issues you have to worry about when you're normally working with rotation. But the point is this is simply adding a rotation to an individual item. Let's pull up the node itself. It's pretty simple. Add relative rotation is going to require a scene component right here. And it's going to have a delta rotation as what we're rotating. A scene component, if you need some assistance on that, is basically a blueprint component that has a transform hooked up to it. Something like my scene component. My stack meshes, these all have transforms or scene component parentage, but my pawn sensing does not, and I wouldn't be able to actually do it, move it, or rotate it because it doesn't exist. We have two other hidden options, sweeping and teleporting, along with an output of a hit result for the sweep, and we'll cover that near the end of the video. Now this is pretty simple. Basically, as this is an add relative node, we're going to take the current version, the current rotation, we're going to add relative to what the current version is, the values we're putting in. Now what that means is you can take the current one, let's say it's this cube right here, and we're going to rotate it 10 degrees on the Z. Now if we were to hit 10 again, it's going to rotate it another 10. And I can show you this. Here's my cube, currently 20 degrees on the Z. We'll do it again, and you notice my Z will continue incrementing by 10 because I'm adding relative to the current, which is 120 right now, 130, 140, 150. I could always go 50 now, and we'll end up with two, well, negative 160, which is 200, based on uh, positive 180, negative 180 for rotational values on a rotation. That's just the way it works. It'll go ahead and figure it out for you. Now, things that are important to note is this is a relative rotation. For just the individual item, if you notice none of the other items are changing, so I'm targeting just this scene component cube. It's also in world space. What do I mean by that? Let's reset my rotation back to zero. Let's go ahead and adjust it 45 degrees on the Y, and you'll now you notice it's slightly angled. Now if I tell this to adjust by 10 on the Z, let's eject, target, uh, and show you it again. You'll notice my world rotation is Z up, and it's going to rotate along that. It's not going to rotate along the Z for the individual components rotation. It's going to rotate on the world's Z, and you'll see that like that. So that's something to keep in mind. Sweeping and teleporting are like our normal versions for sweeping and teleporting if you're moving an item. If you have physics enabled, not physics enabled. If you have collision enabled or you have an overlap, you need to overlap and you have this check. It should trigger or should block. As of now, 4.12, it says it currently isn't supported for rotating. However, it may be fixed or updated in the future. But now you know what sweeping is. It's for if you want to physically interact with the world using collisions and overlaps. Teleport is if something needs to move suddenly and you don't want your physics to go crazy. You have something attached, maybe a rope or a swing or a pipe or a hose, and it physically flails in the wind, for example. But you're all of a sudden rotating 270 degrees instantly, and your physics might go crazy. Tell it to teleport instead. It will move instantly, and you'll no longer have crazy physics. If you are sweeping, and sweeping works, then the hit result will come back out. Let's actually check that. Let's do print string. Let's break our hit result. Let's see if it was actually had anything here. We'll tell it to sweep and we'll go ahead and rotate. Let's see what happens. I actually have not tried this. Now you know it's false. So physics may be working. It may not be working. We really 
Um, you know, I bet you I can test this. Let's find out. Um, we have sweep turned on, right? Let me... Yeah, this should be a fun little experiment. Let's drop this in here. Let's reset back to zero. We'll set this to 150. This is not the one I'm using. Ha! Ah, wonder which one I'm using. Oh, I'm using this one. There we go. Okay, bear with me a second. This is the one we're using. I'm going to move my wall over. And let's move it over so it would actually collide if we're rotating. Let's go with something probably what? Like that? Let's move it over 95. Okay, let's delete this. Let's see what happens here. So I should have a box that is almost against the wall. And let's tell it to rotate up 10 degrees. Okay, and you'll notice I have sweeping turned on. And I'm telling it to rotate. You will notice that it is going through the wall. Let's, um, let's rotate it some more so you can see. There we go. You'll notice it is going through the wall. And we are getting false for every result. So sweeping does not work at this current time. We've at least proven it. But if it does start working in the future, you'll know you'll get a hit result back, and it should block it when it turns. So now that we've done that little experiment, that's going to wrap this up. Add relative rotation. Targets a scene component. In my example, a Q. Takes in a value for an X, Y, and a Z. Let's disconnect these. As a rotation, and it's relative to the current. So a positive will add and a negative will subtract. Sweeping currently doesn't work. Teleporting should work, and it's basically going to suspend physics. And if sweeping was working, we'd have a hit result.